As a civil engineer, when you design or construct any beam, you provide shear reinforcement in the form of stirrup. But have you ever think why shear reinforcement is required, why the long bar are not sufficient, or why shear reinforcement are vertical or inclined, why not horizontal like main bar? Well, this video will answer all these questions. So, welcome to my channel. If you are a civil engineer, please subscribe this channel to get videos on analysis, design, and construction. Let's start. Consider this beam, for example, when you apply this load, this beam will bend like this. And you have already learned that for simply supported beam, this bending will cause tension at the bottom and compression at the top. If you look at the stress distribution caused by this bending, this look like this. This is the linear stress distribution and this is the resultant tensile force and this is the resultant compressive force. Okay. And for this resultant tension, you provide reinforcement. Why? Because under tension, your concrete will crack. To protect this concrete, you need to reinforce this. Similarly, for truss, to carry this tensile force, you provide this bottom cord. And to carry this compressive force, you provide this top cord. That means your truss is nothing but a concrete less beam. Okay. So, Till now, all this component, that means reinforcing steel of beam or bottom cord of truss, carry the force generated due to bending only. Now, my question is, what about shear? Well, if you look at the shear force diagram of this beam, this is the positive shear zone. Why? This is the applied load and this is the reactive force. So. This couple system try to rotate this section in clockwise manner. That is why it is positive shear force zone. But this section is under equilibrium. If you apply this counterclockwise couple, this section will try to rotate. But as it is in equilibrium, an anti-clockwise couple will be generated to keep this section in place or to keep this section in equilibrium. This counterclockwise couple or these counterclockwise forces are known as complementary shear force. Now, let's cut this section and try to visualize the flow of this complementary shear force. Okay, this is the actual shear force acting vertically downward. This is the reactive force acting vertically upward. And this is your complementary shear force. Okay, at the top and at the bottom. Now, if you look throughout this section or throughout the depth of this section, you can see that at the end of the section or at the topmost fiber, it is zero and at the middlemost fiber, this is maximum and this varies parabolically. Why and how this has happened? Obviously, I will make a video on this topic only. So throughout the section, this force is acting. Now let's see the effect of this force. This is the shear force and this is your complementary shear force and if you take the resultant of this shear force and complementary shear force it comes like this similarly at this end it acts like this so you can say along this surface a tension is acting and you know that concrete is very weak in tension so what will be the result yes your concrete will crack like this because you are applying a tension like this and a tension like this. That's why your concrete has been cracked. In real life structure also say this is the reaction is coming and say a load is acting from this garden. Okay. So the shear force is acting like this and your complementary shear force will be acting like this and here like this. So. In this direction, this is the tensile force and here, this is the tensile force. Clear? And you know where the crack should occur? This is the cracking zone. And this photograph also proved, yes, this theory is true. That's why the crack has been occurred only here. Okay? Not in this direction. Clear? In case of a truss, to resist this shear force, what you do? A shear force means nothing but a tensile force or a compressive force like this. 
this is the compressive force resultant compressive force so to carry this compressive force either you have to provide a member like this or to carry this tensile force you have to provide a member like this so here you have provided a diagonal member like this what should be the nature obviously here the tension is occurring in this direction and in this direction so if you provide a member like this it will carry the tension no it is not true it will carry the compression if you provide a member like this in that case it will carry the tension here this member carry the tension now come back to the rcb to resist this crack here you can see this is the crack occurring due to the shear force to resist this crack you have to provide reinforcement throughout the depth that's why we provide vertical stirrup like this okay or a inclined stirrup like this whatever you provide you have to provide throughout the depth that's why the horizontal bar which you provide for carrying the tension coming for bending is not sufficient for shear here this is the cracking location why because you are applying your tension like this okay so if you provide a reinforcement like this or like this obviously this reinforcement will carry your tension and your concrete will not crack even if you provide the reinforcement like this vertically in case of vertical shear in that case also it will carry the vertical component of this tensile force and your concrete will be safe in normal structure you have seen that the stirrup is closely paced near the support compared to the mid span why this happen because in real structure they are loaded with udl or uniformly distributed load and in that case the shear force is like this maximum at the support and minimum at the mid span okay that's why the stirrups are closely spaced near the support okay why the crack tends to occur like this from this figure at support and you resist this crack by providing this vertical stirrup okay and protect your concrete sometimes you have seen that the bottom bar are bent up like this in this case also they will carry this shear force simply you provide your reinforcement along the path of this tensile load so it will directly carry your shear force here in association with the stirrup this bent up bar will carry the shear force also that's all if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe it